then what kind of do you do today? Um, I hurt my knee playing basketball. All right, well, let's perform, perform the uh, pivot shift test just to make sure I didn't tear your ACL. All right, so I need you to lie on your back. Perfect. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend your leg, and um, I'm going to laterally invert it like that. All right, now as I raise it, when it gets to 20 degrees, let me know if you hear a pop, okay? Oh, Did yeah, you feel that? I felt that. All right, that's not a good sign. And it's swollen. Let's see. Um, when you injured it, did you hear a pop? Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's obviously swollen. Is there any pain? Are you having trouble walking? Yeah. All right, well, I'm pretty confident that you did tear it, but how about we run some MRI tests just to be sure? Okay. All right, sounds great. One hour later. All right, so based on your MRI results, you did tear your ACL, and you're going to need arthroscopic surgery, and you need that because you play sports. And um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to clean out the bone and the tissue fragments. All right? So um, I'll set an appointment for your surgery and you can just come back in. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Right. This is what an ACL tear looks like. This is a normal picture and this is where the tear is. The ACL originates at the anterior aspect of the tibia and inserts at the posterior aspect of the femur. Because the ACL is one of the knee support ligaments, Rachel's overextension has resulted in a tear, as seen in, in this MRI. And now it's time for surgery. Okay, doctor, we're ready for surgery. The IVs in her wrist, the paperwork is signed for, the knee is all marked, and she's already under anesthetics. Perfect, let's begin. We are going to use an allograph, which means we are taking an Achilles tendon from a cadaver to replace the torn ACL. The allograph is used to avoid risk at the pain at, of pain at the donor site. This is the Achilles tendon graph we will use for Rachel's ACL. We first are going to drill tunnels into the femur and tibia because the surgery needs to be for, performed arthroscopically. I can either use screws, buttons, or post-fixation devices to attach the graft to the patella. In this particular surgery, I am going to use screws to drill the graft into place. I am going to then make a third incision above the patella in order to pull the graft through the two drilled tunnels. Post-op, Rachel will receive a compression sleeve and a knee brace to immobilize her knee. Expected recovery time is typically 9 to 12 months. During this time, bleeding is the foundation of healing response, as well as matrix, growth factors, and stem cells. The tendon from the cadaver is the matrix, which is the building block to fill the bone and ligament gaps. Growth factors are the proteins necessary for healing. The stem cells are special cells in the human body that will, return, will turn into repair cells. The day after surgery is when the rehabilitation starts. Let's go to the physical therapist. Hi, I'm Dr. Berenger. I'm going to explain what the next 9 to 12 months will be like for you. We will start out slow and only work on gentle ranges of motion, such as bending your knee. Then we will work on strengthening and stretching your knee. We will gradually increase the weights to strengthen your muscle throughout your leg. Since you plan on playing sports again, we will need to work on your proper body mechanics and balance within basketball. Yeah, I feel so much better. I'm ready to play basketball again. You sure? Yeah. Two on two? Let's go. All right, let's go. 